The Admech is one of the most improved and strongest armies going into the start of 9th edition. It's also one of the armies that we've been playtesting the longest because we've been so excited about just how effective it is. So today we're going to take you through all the new tactics, strategies, and pluses and minuses to the army that you're going to need to know to play this army great in 9th edition. So we're going to go through all the things that got better for the Admech, the few things that got worse, <laughs> um, a few key strategies that might be worthwhile to know, and our thoughts on list construction. Um, so there's a lot to go through today, so why don't we jump in and talk about the positives for the army, Absolutely. of which there are many. There's so many. This yeah. is a great, great army in 9th edition. So the first thing we want to talk about are the changes to line of sight. Yeah. Um, the way it works in the new edition, of course, is uh, ruins that are at least five inches tall completely block line of sight. Right until you are inside of them. That's right. What this means is there's actually a lot more uh, positions that you can be shooting from. Yes. Uh, and actually, uh, the, the terms of engagement can be on uh, the shooter side, right? So you can stay hidden behind ruins, you can step onto it and have ridiculous line, lines of sights. It's been really, really powerful in all of our playtesting so far. That's right. Uh, the main caveat here is if you have terrain that does not have windows, mm -hmm. then obviously it doesn't work. You don't just yeah. see through the terrain. You just get true line of sight as soon as you're inside these buildings. Now, Absolutely. all the terrain we have is from basically from Games Workshop, from Frontline, places like that, and they all have windows. And so that means anytime anyone's touching a piece of terrain, they're visible. And particularly those midboard pieces of terrain that used to be really tall and take up a lot of space, mm -hmm. as soon as you get up to that midboard, you're seeing right through. It's a big deal, and, and it's good to mention the fact that, yes, this, this varies uh, as far as the format that you played before, but right. also what kind of terrain, right? So we played ITC where the bottom floor was traditionally completely blocked, right? right? And this was a really bad thing for Admech. It meant uh, many armies could hide on objectives, yes. be completely hidden from line of sight, and the Admech, especially before the score base existed, had no way of dealing with that. It was awful because actually you had to go around this terrain right your army was slow mm -hmm. and by the time you got around your opponent would go to the other side yes. and even worse as soon as you got close to the terrain they would just charge through it and tag you exactly and it would be lights out right that's not the case anymore no so nowadays if you want to be able to charge someone and you want to also get as, as close as you can in those ruins you're going to be visible right you can take a longer yes. charge which is great for admech things like that the other thing about the way that the boards end up getting set up and get and get played from what we've seen you end up with these sight lines and admech loves this they love yeah. to position have a couple sight lines and just blast that claim it do things like that it's perfect for them this is without a doubt the strongest shooting faction in 40k that's right hands down yep no one's better than it um, but it had major drawbacks. Line of Sight was one of them. Now that that's gone, mm -hmm. they're free to bring their firepower to bear. And this, in our experience so far, has been an addition that is favoring shooting armies. So they just got a big buff in that. Absolutely. But that's not where the buffs end. There's a ton more. One of the next ones is the fact that, like all factions, they can move and shoot mm -hmm. with heavy as long as it's not an infantry. Right. Now, they have heavy guns across the army, yes. right? And this used to be a big penalty. A good example mm -hmm. is the Castellan robots. That's right. They used to suffer that move and shoot penalty. They don't anymore. Yeah, they already don't have the best BS. That hurt a lot. You often right. had to kind of just plant and double down on being able to shoot, but then you could get tagged. Um, we saw a little hint of it with the, the Mars Canical. Yes. And oh my gosh, that taste of it, we saw how powerful it is. Now, regardless of what faction you're playing within Admech, you're going to be able to move and shoot with these, these uh, robots that are actually quite fast. They move eight inches, right? Yes. It's very, very powerful. Um, now, the, the Admech already ignored move and shoot with heavy with a bunch of things. Yeah. But just taking key units like the Castellan robot and allowing it to move and shoot with heavy mm -hmm. is a big boost. But vehicles got another boost, yep. which is the ability to shoot in combat. And for Admech, particularly for things, again, like robots that have so many shots, exactly. it's perfect. They're the big winners, right? So while the uh, the walkers with the double last cannon very much benefit from moving and shooting, the moment they get tagged, the last cannons aren't great about uh, clearing uh, sc uh, uh, screens, excuse me. Yeah. But the DACA bots, um, speculative shooting is a thing, right? If you get tagged and you have six DACA bots, yeah. I'm going to throw two or three to clear the screens that are touching me, and yeah. then say the other three will target something else. So they are perfectly suited. They're the big ones, we think, Yeah, well, generally even, speaking. even you talked about the Iron Striders who have their last cannons. Yeah. One of the nice things about them is they historically could get plus two to hit very easily. That's right. That means in combat, they could still get plus one. Mm -hmm. And for, for that one CP, <laughs> right? Right. And so, and you don't have to take last cannons. You take auto, twin auto cannons on yeah. them. It's a lot of shots. And combine their speed with the ability that now that they can use that speed, yep. move and shoot, get on an objective, you touch them and they auto cannon you, this is great news. Pretty nice. I'm really nice. into it. So that is a very, I, I can't even underestimate how big that is because the Admech just used to straight lose games right. when their main uh, shooting force got touched. Right. Now all of a sudden, not you have Warlord traits, you have Canticles, 
And now you have uh, a straight ninth edition of rules, all allowing you to either fall back and shoot or shoot in combat. This army cannot be tagged anymore. So powerful. Um, it just, yeah, we can't, we can't overstate that enough. So between the only thing stopping this army from mm -hmm. being the number one army in eighth edition yep. was that it didn't have line of sight yep. and it could be tagged. Yep, that sounds They're right. They're both gone. <laughs> so, so good. On and, top of all the uh, psychic awakening right. buffs. So, so we think Amazing. we think this army is a contender oh my for, for one of the best factions. There's still things that can beat it, but sure, sure. super strong. Now, it got better in many other ways. Mm -hmm. One of the other lose conditions was wrapping. Absolutely. You have uh, some of these Skatari up the board. Someone would bring a powerhouse unit and wrap those Skatari, yep. and all of a sudden, all you had was really shooting, mm -hmm. you couldn't get into it. Exactly, and well, they would they would tag one, they would start to sort of wrap around it, they would kill it in the in the, in the next turn, then yeah. they would just go into the other stuff. It was devastating, but now, of course, with the breakout stratagem, that is much, much harder to do in a cost CP. Um, it's much less of a liability in, in every single case. Absolutely, yeah, people were starting to tech into the new Pterodaxi because they fly and right. they're screened. You don't need to do that now. Nope. Just take your Skatari, screen with them, mm -hmm. screen with anything, screen with a tank. It doesn't matter now because <laughs> right. you're not as worried about it. Um, additionally, it's even easier to screen mm -hmm. because now you can use uh, a single Skatari unit, wrap it out in front, and people can't now just declare the Skatari and the back unit. Exactly. They really only going to want to charge that Skatari unit. And that means that it's even harder for them to reach you and charge you. Yeah, that's the only thing they can they can realistically declare, especially if they're deep striking, which right. got worse. Also good for admech, right? Um, and the other thing is, even if they're doing all the shenanigans to double fight, pile in extra, which were also the bane of the army before, to at yeah. least tag it again. You know, see column A, where tagging doesn't really matter anymore. That's right. It's great. One of the other things that used to work against the admech is anytime someone could effectively outrange it for a couple mm -hmm. turns. And we saw actually that get improved with the Tech Priest Manipulus. Yeah. And he became an auto-include just for that extra range. Well, all of a sudden now, 36-inch range on a lot of your key guns mm -hmm. is almost the entire board, or it is literally the entire board from almost all positions. Yep. And so now that smaller board means everyone's always in range. It's uh, much more of the board. You can move faster, so you can actually position better. Right. And you can still use the Manipulus if you really want to, which, again, with some of the Warlord traits, just doubling, doubling your range. Um, which now reaches at least half the board to get that extra AP off of the Warlord traits is that much more common to have. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of advantages to being within half range now, mm -hmm. which before was kind of hard, <laughs> but now half range is half the board. Right. So that's starting to look pretty great. Yeah, this went from a uh, mid-board army to yeah. all the board army. It's really, really exciting for that. Well, and of course, one of the other advantages of is that you can get more CP mm. easier. And really, the ad mech yeah. didn't want to take battalions because they're... Their HQs were pretty pricey. Obviously, you could take Tech Priest, but they didn't do much. So taking a Dominus or something like that, pretty pricey. Yep. And their troops didn't really add a lot to the army unless you were yeah. teching around them. Like, yeah, you, you got a unit of uh, uh, Cataphrons. Cataphrons are great. They're great. But they're expensive. You're not, And you're not using all of your troop slots for that, right? Well, you, it's you like can't. one, maybe two. Yeah. And so this is one of those armies that on net is getting a lot more CP mm -hmm. than they used to have. And historically, if you've played Admech like we have, you can run out of CP by turn one, turn two. Yes. Um, now having that CP go a little later, it's really key. It's great. And you're at least hitting basically the CP that you had before with the double battalion. Yeah. The rest of the CP on one hand, you say, well, they're gonna, you're only getting them every single turn, so you have to pace it out a little a bit better. But the baseline has not changed. That's yeah. a really, really strong thing, th thing. So you can still go hot in the first turn if you really want to. You don't really need to. You don't need to. Um, but yeah. then you still get the other CP later on. But so you're not afford, losing any of the You can start. afford to spend more pregame on those extra Warlord traits, mm -hmm. right? You can afford to do some of those abilities. And in fact, even when the uh, the Data Losis came out, yeah. you didn't need to start spending as much on the pluses to hit. Exactly. Now that you're capped, it's really not, you know, you, that CP is going to go a lot further. Exactly. Well, that actually brings us into some of the negatives. And mm -hmm. one of them there is that although you can't have minus two to hit, which is great <laughs> in shooting, right. this army didn't care about minus two. No. Because this army was really good at getting plus two, maybe even plus three on some right. units. Exactly. Now you're capped at plus one to hit. Yeah, it is a bummer not being able to stack any of those. Um, you can at least get the plus one, which is nice for plasma and things like that. But, um, the, of course, the other side is it it, it is cumulative, right? So yeah. if you're going against something that does have some minuses, you can A, negate that, those minuses right. and actually turn them back into positive. So they are less prevalent. That's a bummer. But they're not truly completely gone. Admech has all these tools for negating them in different ways. When we already brought up the idea that once you get tagged in combat, you're yeah. in an innate minus one. So if you've got a big unit of robots, someone tags them, you've got your data losses nearby to take yes. you back down to a four up, <laughs> then you've got a two CP strat to take right. you back down to a three up, now we're talking. I love this too because uh, historically when we've played, when you're at that point, the daily losses kind of has moved back, had to be yeah. more cagey. So he's actually having a tougher time picking those targets anyways. Right, because he only has a 24 inch range. Exactly, so you yeah. might as well say, hey, those guys, they need to die, let's clear them out. And yeah. so it, it's really perfect. 
So if Hathmex starts tacking into a bunch of vehicles, mm -hmm. um, the one disadvantage to that is I think more people at more tables are going to be ready to take on vehicles. Yeah, that's true. And while some of them are very durable, the Dacobots, for example, um, a lot of the, the other ones, like the Scorpius, great, great tanks, but they're they're just a tank at the end of the day. They don't have many yeah. like strong invulns, things like that. So you're bringing the, the exact thing that everyone is expecting to be good. And so that inherently is a negative, uh, but hopefully you can just shoot through it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the point. Uh, you'll, right? you'll take them out. You're still very durable. The robots, even the onagers, they're all fairly durable. I'd say the Iron Striders are pretty paper thin, but they are. there are you know, hopefully you're hitting them before they're hitting you. And Again, using terrain and movement. Them. Exactly. Yeah. One of the other things is that this is a holding addition, mm -hmm. and historically this army is gun-lined. It, it had a tough time taking the mid-board. Yep. Now, of course, you can get more mid-board now, but this mm -hmm. army still lacks amazing OPSEC units that want to be up the board. Obviously, the Cataphrons are good, but they're expensive. They're expensive. If you play more of a melee-centric um, ad mech, you can uh, perhaps take the mid-board a bit better. Um, but what we found in our playtesting is we tried lots of firepower, lots of vehicles, things like that, that there are just enough kind of killy things uh, that, that are useful, and, and kill denial is yeah. one of the big things for Adamek, right. that you can try to negate this, this negative by sort of playing to your strengths. It is more limited, right? There's far fewer secondaries that are built around the types of things that you want to do. But the firepower is just that incredible that it is actually possible. Yeah, you actually touched on our next point, which is the idea that yeah. secondaries are actually a lot harder for this army. Yeah. Um, that's because uh, the secondaries are mostly built around taking three quarters of the board. And keeping it. And this army really wants to hold kind of half of the board. <laughs> and that right. might not seem like a big difference, yeah. but holding half to three quarters is the difference in getting your secondaries or not, mm -hmm. um, or getting them easily or not. And right. so I think that this army is going to have to, you're going to have to get good at really picking up those secondaries and being clever about them mm -hmm. um, because you're not going to start to dominate the board until that ha second half of the game. Yeah, absolutely. The one other thing is a small change to the way the detachments work, which again has overall been good for the army. Yeah. But unfortunately for our friends the Knights that right. are traditionally great allies to bring in, it is tougher. It's going to there's basically no way to get around the fact that it costs CP to add them to yeah. the army. It's a lot of CP to yeah. put a super heavy auxiliary in. It's a bummer. And uh, so it means you're going to see it less often. Now on the plus side, these solved the problem. Mm. They used to be what stood at the front of your army to prevent right. people touching you. Yeah. And they were a tax. Mm -hmm. They were a tax you paid to prevent people from tagging you. Yep. You don't need that anymore. Yeah. Come tag me. <laughs> Come at me. We've grown up knights. Yeah. Sorry. It's going to be fine. Now, yeah. the knights are obviously a very thematic addition, so mm -hmm. that's a shame. Right. Um, but hey, you could still pay. If you want If you want yeah. to do it, you could still pay. Now. Exactly. It's still possible, and it's still going to be a net over what you are currently used to. So. so, obviously, we've talked a lot about how we love things like the robots. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what we're going to do next, we're going to take you through a few strategies where we show you how to get the most out of these robots. Sounds good. Let's take a look. So, the ad mech traditionally aren't the best at holding. But now you could take things like your robots and use them as your holding unit. Absolutely. It's really funny. We're actually seeing this reversal of what we're used to, right? Where traditionally the rangers are the screens for the robots, desperately uh, stopping them from That's being right. touched. In this case, uh, the rangers become important because they are obsec. That's right. And they're very, very fragile, right? right? So what we have here is this sort of inverted situation where the robots are actually the defenders of the vanguard. That's right. The robots are screening for these troops because we have 14 Death Guard here. That's right. It's correct, multiple of seven. That's right. Always. And normally they could have charged in, mm -hmm. touched these robots, and pretty much won the game instantly, right? Because yes, exactly. we'd, we'd have like 800 points here doing nothing. <laughs> Turning off the shooting, taking the point with their obsec. Very, very, uh, very powerful. Yeah, right. So now when they make the charge, even if we don't overwatch, we were careful to position the robots such that they can get some units in, in OPSEC range here, yep. but they can only get about five or six within three inches. Mm -hmm. The rest of these guys are going to have to space out. Now, we have 10 models within <laughs> OPSEC range. That's right. And so no, here, if they were charging, one, they were trying to lock down our robots, mm -hmm. and two, they were trying to prevent us at the top of our turn from scoring. Yep. They've essentially done neither. Exactly. Because what's going to happen here is, at the start of our turn, we're still going to score this because mm -hmm. we have more OPSEC. Right. In combat, if at the best they could do is maybe kill a robot. Maybe. But they but, would have shredded the 10 Vanguard. That's right. Instantly. And even if they if they wound a robot here, the start of our next turn, we're just going to heal that robot back mm -hmm. up. We're going to use our Datalosis here <laughs> yep. to give ourselves plus to hit. And we're just going to blast this unit of Death Guard off the table. Absolutely devastating. And so what you're also seeing here is this general strategy that you can use where you have OPSEC units, but you also have things with big bases or just tough units that can kind of uh, line block basically for these things, right? It's particularly useful for the robots because they can take the charge and That's they right. can respond with their shooting. So they're actually uniquely equipped to do this tactic that is extremely important to playing well in 9th edition. Yeah, so what we have here is a great way to hold a, cent a central objective or yep. even a side objective here. 
Don't think of your robots anymore as a unit that needs to be on the back of the board. No. Go up with them, build a castle around a core objective, mm -hmm. um, especially one if it's worth a secondary point or something yep. like that, and build your army back behind it. And if they're going to be trying to contest you with, with OPSEC, bring your OPSEC and hide them behind. Absolutely. So next, let's show you how to keep your robots safe until it's time for them to unleash. In this second example, we're going to show you how to keep your robots safe in a little more complicated of a situation. Absolutely. So what we have here is uh, this ruin. We've got some buildings on the bottom floor over here. This one's pretty blocked off. Uh, currently, nobody can actually see through on either side. That's right. Even though there's windows, you can't see through. It's a five inch ruin. It's blocking. Now, the Death Guard player here has five Terminators, maybe even more, and they're actually pretty punchy in combat. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to protect our robots from being charged. Now, they've also got three Blight Haulers here, which actually have some pretty great tank killing oh, yeah. and can end up cutting our robot unit in half if things went well. So what we want to do is shoot at, and basically nullify both of these threats. Shoot at this Blight Hauler unit and stop from getting charged here. Mm -hmm. So let's show how we do that. Absolutely. So first off, we started off by just being completely hidden. So even if they get the first turn, we're immune from their shooting. That all looks great. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually make this charge harder uh, to reach the robots when we eventually move them forward. Yeah. So we'd advance our troops up. Uh, you know, they're moving about 9, 10 inches, perhaps. Yeah, and, and we could uh, take all the movement we can get. Exactly. And we basically want to surround their unit. Now, these Terminators don't actually have very much movement. So as long as we're careful about where we place our models, we've now created a wall where they actually have to go around. And it's a very, very long way around. In and fact, we might even want to go further on this sure, side. Sure, yeah. Just because that's where the windows are. And previously, they could absolutely declare this and then declare everything that's back here. Just sort of speculative. Uh, speculatively saying, if we make a really long charge, we could pile in, do some cheeky stuff. Yeah. But in this case, if they did not make it all the way here, that wouldn't work. Exactly. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move our robots up into firing range. There are these windows. Normally, in, uh, say, ITC rules today, there would be nothing you could do to get line of sight. In fact, the robots can move mine eight inches across, and maybe one of them could see over into this corner. And then these haulers would move over and see all of them next turn. But now, because as soon as we're inside this terrain, we can see through this wall, we've now effectively uh, really changed our mobility. Absolutely. Um, we, we can, so now we've just we've moved forwards. We've moved, what, four or five inches. We can see through the windows now. That's sort of unlocked that portion. Uh, and now we can blast away, very likely destroy these. These are the big threats to our robots. Uh, these guys don't have a ton of shooting power, so if they want, they could try to, to gun them down. They're probably going to have to charge them. And uh, we've basically negated everything they want it to do. Now, of course, if you ended up getting this perfect central position. Now, yes. on this board, we're just showing a small example. Sure. But if this spot actually gave you full line of sight, as soon as you move up, you could use the binaric override mm -hmm. and say, OK, I'm going to stay here for the rest of the game, but there's nowhere for you to hide. No. So that binaric override used to be a big risk because before you would lose line of sight and right. you could get tagged. We don't care about either of those. So we're up in here. We've got full line of sight. And if you tag us, we'll just keep shooting you. Absolutely. And one thing to consider is uh, where this building is, right? So we mentioned you can stay completely hidden from the beginning of the game. Um, you might actually want to be able to take movement as soon as you can right. and look for these that are more positioned in the center of the board. That's where you, want, where you want to be able to set up, get that line of sight to at least half, if not the yeah. entire board, and take advantage of that. Just keep them moving, get them on the objectives, and put that threat out there. Yeah. So with these robots, it's particularly if they're Mars, they go up to that strength seven, we could easily kill two, if not three, oh, yeah. of these Blight Haulers. In their next turn, these Terminators actually have to charge, mm -hmm. kill our Skitari, and then they're standing right in front of our robots where we take them out the following turn. Very right? easily. And so we lost nothing of value. These Skitari were pawns that we used <laughs> to right. play this game. Yep. And they lost two of their key units, valued at like 500 points. <laughs> you know, it's a, big, it's a big loss. Absolutely. And so what we see here is... Uh, when to use screens in one way, like we saw in the other example, and yeah. when to use them in a different way, as in this example. Uh, again, both of them using the new rules to uh, charges, to engagement, and to objectives. Absolutely. So why don't we take a look at some of the lists yeah. that we've been thinking about and uh, wrap it up. So one of the things that we've been doing with the armies a lot has been leaning into the Castellan robots. Yeah. Um, because really, they all the benefits just cumulatively work well on them. So I'm going to tell you about a first army that really revolves around Castellan robots. Um, it uses a battalion and a supreme command. Mm -hmm. um, and this is because we're trying to get HQ slots. That's right. Because the HQs are great, and we're trying to get multiple Warlord traits, Yeah. because those Warlord traits are so good. fantastic. And we're taking nine robots. This is a unit of <laughs> six and a unit of three. Yep. Um, you could take them in three units of three, but I actually like the big unit of six for yeah. the ability to binaric override and plus one to hit and things like that. 
Um, and then we take uh, pretty much all the HQs. You take a Tech Priest, you take Belisarius Call, because we are doing this as Mars. Of course. Um, you take the Manipulus and the Data Losis. Now, the reason to do it as Mars is for their new canticle. It's so powerful. The plus one strength on heavy weapons takes a lot of these things from the sort of one, one kind of target that they can actually deal with to another one. It's very, very powerful. Right. Most vehicles in the game are T7-ish, mm -hmm. um, even or lower. Yep. And so all your robots going up from strength six to strength seven okay. means they not only are the best infantry killing unit yeah. and elite killing, but they're also now the best tank killing. That's right. And you don't necessarily have to spend the command points on Wrath of Mars, right? You can That's now right. Fulfill that role without having to spend those extra CP. And the four HQs we found to be the sweet spot because you can sort of get the three mega warlord traits that you want. You can still give Call the plus uh, three inches to his aura range. Um, it's really the, the sweet spot, which luckily you could do with just the battalion plus this one's uh, Supreme Command. So that's Absolutely. Nice. Now you can fill in the rest with whatever you'd like. Um, take a bit of Skatari. Mm -hmm. um, I actually took some uh, some Fulgalite Electro Priests. Yeah. Um, and then I also took two Scorpius Dune Riders. Um, this is a way to keep my very few infantry alive. Yeah. I want these infantry for secondaries. I want to be able to do actions, grab objectives. Um, and so keeping them alive until I can get around to doing that. Basically, I want to clear the threats. Right. And then get my weak little infantry out <laughs> of the transport. Right. And they can't afford to be shooting my transports because they've got to be shooting my robots. Yeah, there's bigger targets. And one thing to mention about the big robot squads is... Um, you all know about the changes to Overwatch. Right. It's great for giant squads of really shooty things. So six robots doing Overwatch is still really, really scary. Whether yeah. or not you choose to do it, it's enough of a threat to be extremely valuable in the world of virtually no Overwatch. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is his first test, and we've played this a handful of times, yeah. actually. We like um, we're going to be playing something similar to this on stream. Um, it's a really strong army, so I, I think you can't go wrong with this. Yeah. It's just such an impressive amount of uh, output. <laughs> the next army, though... Speaking of which... We, we like to call that army heavy shooting. Yeah. This is heavier shooting. More DACA. Yeah, so it's <laughs> what happens if you go all in. Yep. That ar other army had the tanks, it had the priests, it had a bit more Skatari. Mm -hmm. This says, no, no, no. Let's just go all shooting. And what we've done here is still six robots, because... Mm -hmm. Can't leave home without them. Yep. But we also took six Iron Striders. That's right. Um, I think we're still feeling out whether Laz Cannons or Auto Cannons are the right pick. Yeah. I think they're both great. They're good. No problem there. We, this is still Mars because, unfortunately, it's still the best. Um, uh, those Laz Cannons going up to nine against Knights and all kinds of great stuff. The extra strength, plus with Call getting the double cannons and so much flexibility. It's um, amazing. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we still have the Tech Priest, the Manipulus, mm -hmm. the Daylosis. Uh, that, that, uh, hero setup is still the right, right. way to go. It's a, it's a lot of points. But then we also have six plasma catafron destroyers. Mm -hmm. um, really so painful. Extremely right? painful. Uh, you, you can get the new five up. Feel the pain, warlord trait. Thank you very That's much. Right. Um, and there are, all, are certain things in the game, actions, things that need to happen that only infantry can do. That's right. And so these and are very tough. tough. Super yeah. tough. So they could pick up those objectives, yeah. but also they're really great at elite killing. Mm -hmm. They're going to help our tank killing, etc. And then we've got um, this, because I think this one's just a... Um, has fewer troop choices. Um, we've just got some Skatari here. Um, they're right. mostly backfield screens, front field screens. We'll show actually in the examples. Um, we showed in the examples how to use them, and, and that's always a good thing. That's right. And we played around with a couple a couple extra tanks in there. The Onager, I think, which is also up for one of the most uh, most benefited from the new Canicles. Right. It, it really takes every single one of those profiles up to the next level. Yeah, this so, is the Icarus Honor. Honor yeah, we like that. The best. It's just got the most shots, and even though the fly keyword's not going to be as prevalent. The minus one to hit isn't... It's still that, just so really powerful. Matter. You're already maxed at minus one. Exactly. And when you have all the rerolls from Call, it's still great. <laughs> and it's just, a, it's just a durable tank. You just walk it up yeah. onto an objective. And it's long range, too. It's in the back. It can yeah. be wherever it needs. So those are our two lists, DACA and more DACA. Yeah, they're a fantastic <laughs> list. And, of course, we are going to be playing a game with this army mm -hmm. on stream this week. And, of course, just like we've always been saying, we're going to be playing with every army and doing tactics videos just like this for almost every faction in the mm -hmm. game within this first month of the ninth edition release. If you guys want to see the faction that we would probably give the award of uh, most improved, definitely tune in for that match. Like and subscribe. We're going to be flooding everything with tons of videos, so make sure you're following it along. And uh, let us know about your own experiences with this new army. We'll All see right. you soon. We'll see you.